Hey there, welcome to episode 111 of the Social Business Engine Podcast, the podcast where I invite thought leaders from all industries to share their expertise on social and digital communications best practices. I'm Bernie Borges from Find and Convert and your host of the Social Business Engine Podcast. On today's episode, you are going to meet Derek K. Hubbard, Social Business Specialist at Southwest Airlines. On this episode, you are going to learn how Southwest Airlines is using live video to engage with customers and humanize their brand. This episode is sponsored by our very own Social Business Workshop for Business Development. This online workshop is delivered in both group and one-on-one coaching sessions. It's designed for business development teams who want to learn how to use social media channels to build key relationships that create sustained sales results. To learn more about this online workshop, visit socialbusinessengine.com slash workshops. And now, here's my interview with Derek K. Hubbard, Social Business Specialist at Southwest Airlines. Derek, welcome to the Social Business Engine podcast. Thanks so much for having me, Bernie. I'm looking forward to our conversation. Terrific. Well, me too. I've been looking forward to this. And Derek, I have to say, I feel a little bit funny um, with this first question I'm going to ask you because I know a fair amount about Southwest Airlines and probably many of my listeners do. But, you know, I still would like to begin by asking you to just give an overview of the airline because there may be some people out there that may not be as familiar as you and I are with Southwest Airlines. Absolutely. Well, uh, first of all, I'd have to say that uh, I hope that you will will, will take some time and uh, come join me on a flight sometime soon. Maybe we can uh, check out Denver, I believe you mentioned to me earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that could be really fun. But yeah, Absolutely. but for people who, who don't know about Southwest Airlines, um, we our company started about 45 years ago, and the impetus for Southwest was that there really wasn't a carrier in the market that was providing um, affordable, low fares for customers with um, hospitality. So that's what our founder, Herb Kelleher, set out to do, was to create this airline where uh, people were able to enjoy air travel at an affordable cost while also having some fun doing it. So we initially were flying into three cities here in the Texas area, and from there the company just has grown and expanded um, in those 45 years. And now we have more than 90 destinations here in the United States, as well as some international destinations like Costa Rica, Aruba, Puerto Rico, um, and even the Dominican Republic. So Derek, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here, um, because when you say that travelers can have fun, what do you mean by that? You want to give an example of what it means to be on a Southwest Airlines flight and actually have some fun. Oh, well, Bernie, we're all about fun here. I mean, that's even one of our core values is that you have to have a fun-loving attitude in order to get through the doors at Southwest, and we really do mean that. So um, one example that comes to mind, if you've ever flown Southwest, and for people who haven't flown, they would not have necessarily experienced this firsthand, but they might have seen it um, online. Right. Our right. flight attendants all have unique personalities. And that's one of the coolest things about flying with us. So you get on board, you get to your seat, you put your bag overhead, and you sit down and you say, okay, now it's time for me to prepare for this flight. Well, guess what's about to happen? You need a safety demonstration by the flight attendants. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you can do the the standard run-of-the-mill safety announcement, or you could have some fun with it. So we have some flight attendants who may wrap the safety announcement. We have some who will... (laughs) Sing it. We have some who might even do a dance with That's it. That's right. I've and seen it. Assured, I've seen every it. Every single time, every single time, it, it, it will be different, and you'll remember exactly what they're doing. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, that's just one example of how we like to have fun on board. I mean, we've also had uh, weddings in the sky. We've had two customers who wanted to get married, and we made that happen for them. We've done fashion shows in the sky. We've had TV panels. We've had live at 35,000 feet musical performances where we have a band who actually surprises our customers and plays on board during the flight. So anything that we can do to enhance the customer experience on board and to surprise our customers by doing something fun, 
we're going to jump at those opportunities. Yeah, yeah, outstanding. Well, I've I've flown many times and I've witnessed that firsthand. So, and I'm sure many of my listeners have as well. But uh, I'm sure there's some listeners out there that perhaps have not. The last remark on this, and then we'll we'll get to the main topic of live streaming, is that uh, what you guys have done at Southwest Airlines with that whole fun-loving attitude has inspired other airlines to change the way they do. You know some of their safety demonstrations, maybe not in person, but in video format. So you 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 have you've had an impact on the industry. Let's move on to the first question. We're here to talk about live streaming. So let's just begin with the open-ended question I have for you, Derek. On how is Southwest Airlines using live stream video? Well, currently here at Southwest, we're using live stream video um, in three different ways. Uh, the first way is to go behind the curtain, so really to understand what we do here at Southwest, what do the people do, how does, um, you know, how does your flight experience translate into um, everything happening before it? So leading up to your flight or even during your flight or post-flight, what do our people do to help prepare and get that flight ready to go? The second thing we use it for is to kind of show behind um, the scenes or to reveal something really special. So these are things like if we have a new announcement, maybe we have a new city that we're opening or a new specialty aircraft that we want to reveal. And then the third thing is to recruit new employees. So we have a, over 50,000 employees that work for the company and we're constantly looking for new talent to come in and work alongside each of us. Of course, you heard me talk about that fun-loving attitude earlier yep. um, as one of our core values. So this is a way that we're able to help recruit those types of people to work here at Southwest, whether it's um, at our headquarters operation or if it's on board an aircraft, at the airport, or even in some of our other positions around, uh, around our system. So, so the, the live stream that you're doing for recruiting, that, that really intrigues me. Um, you want to elaborate on that a little bit? Like, how, how are you guys doing that? Sure. So one way that we're using live streaming to help recruit new talent to our company is by going out on culture blitzes. And what a culture blitz is for us is where we have our internal culture team go out and recognize our employees around the system at various airports for doing a great job um, with our customers and with their fellow um, employees as well. So we'll go out with the culture team and we'll decide that we want to profile an employee. So one particular example comes to mind when we profiled a Provo agent named Daryl in St. Louis, if I'm not mistaken. So we went, we knew Daryl was being celebrated um, along with the other employees at the airport there. And we said, Daryl, we want to do a couple streams to show our viewers, one, what a Provo agent is, two, what a day in the life of a Provo agent looks like, and then three, to um, help maybe encourage someone who, one, didn't know that that was an opportunity um, in terms of a job, and then two, let them know, hey, if you're interested in this, if this work looks fun, if this work looks like something that you would be great at, here's how you can get more involved with that. So with Daryl specifically, I believe we ended up doing about three streams. Each stream was a little bit different, and really we just got to know Daryl. And what was cool about that one, Bernie, is that by the end of the stream, we had people who were writing in comments, who were um, asking us questions specifically about, about Daryl, saying, hey, we want to see more Daryl. Um, ask Daryl if, really? he, if he prefers peanuts over pretzels. Uh, <laughs> ask Daryl what he orders when he sits down on board. Does he drink you know, a soft drink or does he prefer water? And it was a really cool opportunity because people were getting so invested in Daryl's life and so many people even asked, hey, how can I do what Daryl does? So, of course, we referred them to southwest.com slash careers. Right, right, right. Now, Derek, you mentioned that the internal culture team goes out. So is there a team of people that's full-time devoted to this, or is just a team of people where that's a part of their responsibility? No. So we have a full department that is devoted to recognizing our our employees and making sure that our Southwest culture permeates throughout the system. Okay. Um, you know, I, I keep talking about that fun loving attitude, yeah. but it really is serious to us because yeah. that's what we were built on. It's your I brand. Mean, it's our it's brand. It's your brand. Absolutely. When you think about Southwest, I mean, you think hospitality, you think fun. You think fun. Absolutely. You know, and that's what we want to provide. We want to make sure that our, our customers are having a positive experience whenever they fly us. So, uh, yeah, our culture, our um, culture services team, they are truly dedicated to making sure that each Southwest 
employee is able to live out our culture every day and also share that with our customers. Okay. I've got a million questions flying through my head right now. Notice I said <laughs> flying, right? Um, pun intended. So, um, okay, where do I start? You, you mentioned three ways you're using live streaming, behind the scenes, revealing special stuff, and employee recruitment. So, yeah. how, you know, how do you staff it? Um, can you talk about, you know, tell me what you can and can't talk about on a podcast, right? Can you talk about like what live streaming platforms you're using? So, you know, let's start there. How do you staff it and what platforms are you using if you can talk about that? Sure. So all of our live streams, um, you'll notice, are not necessarily staffed by, say, influencers or partners or celebrities. Um, we just have, have decided not to go that route. So all of our live streams will actually be hosted by Southwest employees. Okay. So we, we primarily start with the team that, that I'm on, which is the social business team. So um, several of, of my cohorts, and that's what we call each other instead of coworkers, cohorts. Really? So several okay. of, of my cohorts and me will actually be the ones who will, will host the live streams. Um, and it really just depends on, on what our angle is, which of those three um, angles we're going after to determine who specifically will will host. So from there, if we know that we have a recruitment angle, we will work ahead of time to get in touch with with leaders to say, hey, who would be a great uh, person maybe at the St. Louis airport to talk about being a Provo agent? And they say, oh my gosh, Daryl would be a great person for that. So then we work with the leader, work with Daryl to get him comfortable or get whomever the subject will be on the stream let them know ahead of time some of the questions we may be asking right. and also get them prepped for, hey, our customers also will have a chance to ask questions and we want you to be prepared to answer those. Okay. So it's really just making sure that everybody involved with the stream is comfortable. We want to make always make sure that we are compliant, of course, with um, any DOT regulations, um, any um, thing going on with our operation because the needs of the operation come first. So if we know that we're planning a live stream and there may be um, weather impacting our operation, we may have to tweak exactly what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, so we always try to keep an eye out for those things. But a lot can happen, of course, in the airline industry that is unforeseen. So we have to be nimble and have to be flexible. Right, right. So once we have it staffed, then we, we decide, okay, which platform are we going to use? So... Live stream really has taken off, I would say, within the last six to nine months. Mm -hmm. um, about a year ago, people were talking all about Meerkat, right. and we used right. Meerkat um, whenever it launched, and then we also used Periscope whenever it launched as well. And one thing that we've noticed here recently is that we have been um, shying more toward Facebook Live and Periscope as our, our areas of focus with live streaming. I won't say that we're using one or the other exclusively just because it's still so new that we're, we're still kind of in that test and learn phase um, as many companies and brands are just really trying to figure out, okay, what works, what doesn't work. Sure, we have our three main focus areas that we like to go after, but even within those, we're constantly evolving how we're telling those stories, which is really cool. So I would say, um, you know, if you're looking at Periscope, uh, Periscope, has a smaller audience, of course, than Facebook Live, just mm -hmm. by nature of how many users are on the platform. Mm -hmm. And Periscope is a really great way to go out, test your content with a smaller audience, and really get some positive, positive feedback that will help you improve the nature of your streams the next time. Whereas Facebook Live is more for that larger audience. Um, think of it as the main stage. This is where you're ready. You want to be completely buttoned up leave nothing to chance to really be able to push your message out there. Interesting you say that, though, Derek, because Periscope is tied to Twitter, and, you know, Southwest Airlines as a brand has a big following on both Facebook and Twitter, so I'm intrigued that you look at Periscope as kind of the smaller of the two, at least yeah, significantly well, anyway. Sure, sure. And, and, I mean, let me be clear. It's not to say that, that the Periscope audience is – it's small at all, but just by, by comparison to Facebook, sure. I think you, you think we have seen just a significant, um, a s significant space in between how many viewers we might receive on Periscope versus how many we receive on Facebook Live. And I think that's due in part to the nature and how the videos live beyond just that first 24 hours. So, of course, on Periscope, when we go up with the live stream, if we were to stream right now, 
our video would be available on that platform on Twitter for 24 hours after the stream ends. Whereas Facebook Live, we, we go live right now beyond 24 hours. That video will just live on our Facebook channel. So there's more of an opportunity for people who might not have tuned in live or even within the first 24 hours after the, the stream concludes they have the opportunity to go in after the fact and watch the video. And of course, those video views are, are counted towards the total. So we've just seen a, a significant number of people watching, more people watching the Facebook live streams than the Paris. Sure. Paris well, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. So what have you learned? How long have you been doing it now? And what kind of lessons have you learned along the way? Because, you know, as you said, live streaming is still fairly new. It's been around, you know, maybe a year or so. In fact, I recall it was about exactly a year ago, um, March or April. I think it was April of 2015 where Periscope launched and Meerkat had only launched previous to that. I think it's Southwest, uh, South by Southwest. So we're talking, you know, 12, 14 months now that it's been out. But like, like you said, Derek, you know, it's really gotten hot in the last six to nine months. So what have you learned along the way? Yeah, well, I, I think for us, we've learned that it's it's okay to try a lot of different things. Um, I believe when it first came out, there was a lot of trepidation just by brands in general of, oh my gosh, this is a really cool opportunity. However, this could really open up my brand to, you know, have to do damage control. Right. Because if you think about it, Bernie, it's live. Yeah. I mean, you can't take it back <laughs> once right. you've shown it, yep. once you've said it. Yep. I mean, you have that moment of, oh, my gosh, we might should have done something differently. And I think so many brands were afraid of that right from the beginning and were really afraid to test the waters. And, and I'm proud to say um, that here at Southwest, we've always kind of been a maverick in the airline industry. And I would say we've, we've been a maverick when it comes to live streaming as well because our leaders believed in the platform and believed in us and said, um, you know, really, really gave us the support that we needed to go out there and try different things, um, you know, and really, really try to make an impact in, in what we were doing. So one of the first things I would say that we, we learned was that um, the length of the stream. Of course, we can talk all day about the attention spans of people in general and the attention spans of people when it comes to social media and content that they see on social so I think the natural inclination when, you, when live streaming is that the more you show, the better. Well, that's not always the case. Mm -hmm. It really has to, to start with the content. If the content is there, you would hope that the audience would stay there with you to, uh, to share in that content. However, you have to constantly be listening to your audience. So one thing that we love about both of the platforms, Facebook Live and Periscope, is that we're getting that real-time feedback from our, our audience. They're telling us what they like, what they don't like. They're asking questions, and we're very thoughtful about the way we lean into those questions. So we might be talking about Daryl the Provo agent, or we may be unveiling a new specialty aircraft. Well, if they ask a question about something else that might not necessarily be on topic but is relevant, then we want to lean into that and we want to show them, hey, we're listening and we want to provide that value to you. So really understanding what your audience wants to see and hear and then tailoring that content, content to them. Typically, we don't like to go longer than about five or six minutes on a stream and then we'll also break up streams if we have to. So hmm. okay. before, before we might have um, condensed three streams worth into one, whereas now we may say, okay, well, we think we can... Um, safely divvy this up into three separate streams. The content will still be strong in each stream, and then we'll go out with it that way. So we really look to our audience and look to our customers to help us uh, tell that story, tell that narrative, and adjust just as we need to. Okay, cool. So you, you, you mentioned Facebook and Periscope as the primary live stream platforms. So, of course, I have to ask you, Derek, what is Southwest Airlines, if anything, doing with Snapchat? So right now, uh, Snapchat isn't a channel where we are uh, proactively putting out content. So um, our focus... Are you looking uh, at it? Well, of course, Bernie, we're looking, we're, we're constantly looking at, at a variety of different social channels, really trying to understand which ones are out there, where does it make sense for us to be, um, you know, where does it make sense for us to concentrate our efforts. And, sure. and, right, and right now we just um, have decided that that's not uh, a focus area for us right now. But, of course, we're constantly looking at it and looking at its evolve, 
Evolvement, and um, many other channels as well. Okay. So, um, as you're doing the live streaming, and you said, you know, the the social business team is the one that's doing it, right? So, there's probably a fairly small number of you that are, quote unquote, I'll use the word qualified. And by qualified, I mean, you know, they're on your social business team. You don't just hand a phone over to just an employee and say, press this button and you're, you're live streaming, right? It's, it's, it's your team that actually does it. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And, and to that point, Bernie, we do, uh, we all do go through, um, a training. So Boy, you read my something. mind. That was my next question, Derek. <laughs> oh man. Okay. <laughs> well, Hey, I might have another career in mind reading, uh, <laughs> if, if, if social doesn't work out for me, but, um, but yeah, so seems to be uh, working for it, by the way. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but of, of course, I mean, and, and as I alluded to earlier, it, it's really daunting to think about, hey, I'm going live, anything can happen, I don't want to make yeah. a mistake. Yeah. And, any, and we're all human, so, I mean, things happen. But one of the things that, that we really talk a lot about um, in our training is focusing on the five C's, Com- composition, content, characters, continuity, and closure. And so those are really our guiding principles when it comes to what we do um, on our live streams. So we want to make sure that we understand specifically what's going to go in each of those, those buckets, those five C's, to help inform how we're going to tell that story. Um, one thing that we like to do, we like to do test streams. So we will um, fire up Periscope and we'll do a private stream and we'll just stream it to the rest of our team. Okay. So I'll say, hey, guys, I'm going to do a test stream and I'm just going to stream it to you, you five or six people and um, give me some feedback. Let me know what you think. So this is a really great practice area for us where we can um, mess up. We can say, oh, well, you know what? Maybe I should say something differently yeah, or yeah. maybe we should change the, the content a little bit. It doesn't yeah. really translate in the live environment. And we're able to provide each other feedback. So the people who are live streaming, myself included, no, we, just, we won't just throw them, throw them out there to the wolves, if you will. Uh, we want to make sure that they feel comfortable on, on camera, want to make sure they feel comfortable um, leading the subjects to the story that we need them to share, and really um, feel comfortable in capturing the visuals that accompany the stream as well. Um, and I would, I would say everybody who's done it, the first one, of course, is always the most nerve-wracking. Um, and yeah. I can tell you, Bernie, my first live stream with Southwest, I was so nervous because <laughs> I was afraid that I would say the wrong thing or right. that I, I wouldn't get the right story. And um, all of those nerves subsided after the fact. And I, I saw the feedback from, from the customers and, and our audience. And, I mean, they could care less about me. And they were eating up the content. And that's mm-hmm. what we want. We want them to be engaging with us. We want them to say, this is valuable. This really did make a difference for me. Or, or I appreciate what Provo does. I didn't even know that there were people who helped restock the planes. I mean, there. Those are some of the types of comments that we receive. I didn't know that was a job. Yeah. So if we can provide that value to our customers and they're able to get something from that, we've done our job. Yep. Yep. And what were the five C's again? So the five C's are composition, content, characters, continuity, and closure. Awesome. Okay. All right. One uh, final question before I go to the wrap, uh, the summary that is. And that is, uh, I'm going to lump two questions into one, Derek. A two for okay. Uh, what advice would you have for other brands who are maybe just getting started with uh, live video? But I'm going to ask you, if you would, to segment it into a B2C brand. What advice would you have for a B2C brand like Southwest Airlines and a B2B brand? And I know it's very generic, right? Because, you know, B2C can be, you know, makeup or it could be you know clothing i mean all kinds of things right or airlines right and same thing with b2b very broad but if you could just you know just give us some general advice for b2c's and b2c brands just getting started with live streaming sure um well i I think what you could do um with a b2c brand really is just not be afraid I, i i know that it is very important to protect the brand to protect the voice and the product or services that you're offering to the consumer um, and and we, we understand that um, just like any other B2C brand out there. But it's important not to be afraid. It's, it's important not to be afraid to actually put yourself out there, expose yourself a little bit, because you are, you are exposed as a brand whenever you do live streaming. 
um, and let the consumer know, hey, guess what? I want to be able to communicate directly with you in a format that is different than we've done before. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, of course, you might have email marketing. You might have um, actual mail marketing and, and various touch points with your customer. But what live streaming does, it allows people ultimately to come into your living room, um, mm-hmm. as an example. Mm-hmm. This gives them the opportunity to say, hey, you know what? The, they're just like me. I understand what they're trying to do, or I see their employees who may be trying to sell me the makeup, and I see how I might be able to apply the makeup to myself if I purchase it, just to use that as an example. Mm-hmm. So don't be afraid to go out there and expose yourself. And then number two, um, for a B2C brand, I would say try a variety of different things. Don't think that one size fits all. I, I don't want a B2C brand to look at what we're doing and think that our approach will directly translate to their brand and their product mm-hmm. because it may and it, it may not, but you have to figure out what your area of expertise is and figure out a way to be able to talk to that customer. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. And any advice it, for a B2B, B2B brand? Sure, and, and for a B2B brand, what I would say is think about live streaming as a way to really show other, other brands how people are benefiting from from using your your product or your service. So if you're a professional services brand, why not go out there and live stream with one or two of your clients who actually has benefited from what you're doing? Show your services in action. Show your people actually um, consulting, actually Mm -hmm. working with other clients. Of course, it could be tricky making sure that, sure. Um, you know, that, that you have the, the proper approvals and that you're not right. sharing proprietary information right. from your, the client perspective, right. but really showing exactly what you do and how people are benefiting from it. I think that's one of the best testimonials uh, that you possibly could get for your brand. Yep. I, I, I mean, if you look on B2B websites, um, often you will see written testimonials. You might see video testimonials. But I would venture to say you probably haven't seen many testimonials done via live stream. Yep, yep. And I think this is a huge opportunity for B2B brands to really uh, show potential clients and p- potential prospects exactly what they do and how it's benefiting others. Yep, I totally agree. Well, you know, on the agency side of my world at Find and Convert, we live on in B2B. That's our, our client base. So I totally agree with both your advice as well as the concerns that you have to work around. So that's fantastic advice, Derek. Thank you so much. All right, we are at the point in the podcast where I do a summary of what we discuss here today. And then what I ask you to do, Derek, after I've completed my summary, is to either fill in any holes or elaborate or clarify or even correct me uh, if I said anything wrong <laughs> in my summary. All right. Okay. Sounds All good. Right. Here we go. We started with a discussion of Southwest Airlines and a little background, a you know, 45-year-old um, airline, uh, really focused, your, your founder focused on delivering a an airline service that provided both affordable air travel with fun hospitality with a real emphasis on fun you've got more than 90 destinations and the whole fun loving thing is a core value in the company uh, your flight attendants have unique personalities and do lots of interesting things including conduct weddings in the sky <laughs> so that's really awesome and i've personally flown many times on southwest so i can attest to all of that then, of course, we got into a discussion of how you're using live stream uh, video, and there's three areas of the business or three ways that you're using it that you discussed. One is behind the scenes, including things like how people pr- prepare the flights, revealing special stuff, you know, maybe new aircrafts or a new destination or whatever it might be. And then the third one, which really fascinates me, Derek, is employee recruitment. You said you're always recruiting and you've got a whole culture team, an internal culture team, and you do these culture blitzes uh, where you go out to locations, you know, airports, etc., and you recognize an employee. You gave an example of how you followed uh, Daryl around, who's a Provo agent, and, you know, really showcased him. So that's really, really cool. So those are the three ways that you're using live stream video. We talked about how you staff it. You made the point that you don't staff it with any external people. It's 100% internal people like yourself, people on the social business team, which you call cohorts, and how you uh, really focus on prepping the subject, meaning if you're prepping the employee, if you're going to showcase an employee, you of course need to be compliant with Department of of Transportation regulations, and how you're always focused on delivering the, the five C's, composition, content, characters, continuity, and closer. And um, you, you can do test streams so that uh, you, you kind of practice something you want to you do before you actually kind of go live to the world. 
And then, uh, sp speaking of live to the world, on the platform side, you started out with Meerkat when Meerkat first came along, but then you moved to Periscope. And then more recently, since Facebook Live has kind of come on the scene, uh, you're using mostly Facebook Live and Periscope. Although we talked a little bit about how Periscope is a slightly smaller audience. Well, maybe not slightly, but it's a smaller audience. And you use a little bit of a, uh, as a testing ground before you kind of hit the big stage. You know, maybe we'll call that Broadway. <laughs> on the big <laughs> stage of, of Facebook Live. Um, and then from a lessons learned standpoint, you know, you said that it's okay to experiment. You know, you mentioned, hey, this is live. Um, so you've got to, you know, you've got to be ready, but, you know, you also um, want to do some experimentation. You also mentioned that uh, the length of the stream uh, comes in around five or six minutes. So, you, you know, you learn that, you know, you can't be too long. And that seems to be, I think, maybe a sweet spot, although that's my word, not your word. And that you also said you're not currently uh, on Snapchat, but, of course, you know, you're looking at it as you would look at anything that, you know, comes on the scene as a as a popular social media platform. I personally am going to be watching to see, you know, if Southwest Airlines as a brand does jump on Snapchat because it is wildly popular. And then we talked, we kind of wrapped with advice for both B2C brands and B2B brands. And on the B2C side, you started with saying, don't be afraid. You know, let the customer know that you want to communicate directly to them in their living room. And don't be afraid to try different things. And then the advice for B2B brands, which I love, is think of live streaming as a way to show how people are benefiting from your products or services, as well as ways that you can show your employees in action. So, Derek, that's my summary. Uh, again, fill in any holes, clarify, correct, wherever you see fit. Bernie, you said that better than I could have, so, <laughs> so that, that all sounded great to me. All right, terrific. All right, Derek, well, where would you like to send people online to learn more about anything we discussed here today? Sure. To learn more and, and to see some of our previous live streams, I would direct anyone to visit us on our Facebook page um, at Southwest. Um, or if you're on Twitter at Southwest Air, we'd love to, to chat with you and love for you to uh, join us on our next live stream, whenever that may be. Outstanding. So you, you broadcast them through, when you're doing them on Periscope, you broadcast them, uh, obviously, th out through Twitter uh, at the same time, right? That's right. That's right. We do broadcast it out through, through Twitter. Okay. Terrific. Outstanding. Well, Derek K. Hubbard, thank you so much for sharing your social business in insights with us here on the podcast. I really, I really appreciate all your insights and your time today. Thank you so much, Bernie. It was a pleasure, and uh, I hope that your that your listeners, um, you know, found something helpful and found some value in our chat. And um, of course, would love to see them on some of our streams in the future. Outstanding. I'm sure they have, and I'm sure you will. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. All right. Well, I hope that you enjoyed my conversation today with Derek K. Hubbard, social business specialist at Southwest Airlines. I know. I did. I'm tempted to actually try to do something funny in my outro, but uh, I don't think I'd be hired by Southwest because uh, I'm not a funny person. So I'm just going to go with my standard outro here, and that is that this episode is sponsored by our very own Social Business Workshop for Business Development. You can learn more about it at our website at socialbusinessengine.com slash workshops. And I want to remind you that if you're not subscribed by email to get our weekly podcast updates that we send every Friday, well, why not? Well, okay, if you want to be, <laughs> then just go subscribe at our website at socialbusinessengine.com. And also consider writing a, a review of our podcast in iTunes. By writing a review, others can discover it. And we provide a direct link to our podcast at our website at socialbusinessengine.com slash iTunes. And lastly, I always want to invite you to engage with me on Twitter. My handle is my name, at Bernie Borges. This podcast is also on Twitter and on Instagram with the handle at SB Engine and follow our hashtag SBE show. Well, that's going to do it for episode 111. I want to thank my guest once again, Derek K. Hubbard, social business specialist at Southwest Airlines. This is Bernie Borges of Find and Convert, wishing you continued success on your social business journey.